bring up another fellow friar, a very funny man. Uh, this man was recently seen on the Kroll Show on Comedy Central. You can hear him on uh, Sirius XM Radio. Put your hands together for Jeffrey Gurian. Greenberg, everybody. And so nice to be here honoring Joe Franklin. What a great guy. Did his show many times. He used to sit right up here in the front, and there was really no greater supporter of comedy than Joe Franklin. So let's hear it for Joe. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, I'm uh, sorry to see so many people here tonight. Uh, I was kind of hoping for a smaller crowd. I like small crowds. Basically, I like working one-on-one. -on -one. I like entertaining one person at a time, which I'm afraid is what I'm doing right now. And if that person would be kind enough to identify themselves, I'd be very grateful. The truth is I like working small crowds because my agent books me in small rooms. The last gig he got me was the coat room at the Four Seasons. <laughs> the coat room. <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> During a heat wave. <laughs> it was a very small crowd. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have an agent. <laughs> I got the coat room on my own. <laughs> no, I do have an agent, and he gets me the weirdest gigs. The craziest gigs. Like, you know how some comics work these huge cruise ships? My agent booked me on a rowboat in Central Park. <laughs> just my luck, I did so well, I got a standing ovation, almost grabbed. <laughs> Here I'll be working a kayak. <laughs> if that works out, I'll be entertaining one guy standing alone next to a puddle. <laughs> so that's how my career is going. But I, uh, I did get some good news recently. I'm very excited. I just found out I'm starring in a new poem. <laughs> I've been in poems before, but this one's different. I'm in every single stanza. <laughs> Very exciting, very exciting. No, the truth is I am very excited because I, I took the plunge into real estate. I bought a men's room in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, owning a men's room sounds exciting. But I'll tell you what I don't like about it. I hate when guys come in and ask if they can use my restaurant. <laughs> room here. <laughs> Just come in and use the restaurant. <laughs> Have a little courtesy. Didn't you see the sign? It clearly says restaurant for patrons of the men's room only. <laughs> I got another sign that says please wash hands before using the men's room. <laughs> well I don't want anyone going in there with food on their hands. It's a brand new men's room. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know if you could tell, I was a very uh, nervous kid growing up. I've had a stomach ache since 1954. <laughs> I wasn't even born till 56. <laughs> I, uh, I was a very small child. I was born nine months premature. <laughs> they didn't think I would make it, and unfortunately I didn't. <laughs> Which is the main reason I couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> I was afraid that might be a little too weird for you guys, but I'm glad you're with me on that. Um, I grew up in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood, but I never knew too much about religion. You know, the Old Testament, the New Testament. <laughs> it was all the same to me. We did have a mezuzah outside our door. But it wasn't for religious reasons. Jews are very accommodating. We want you to know where we live, 
Just in case a pogrom breaks out in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you accidentally disturbing our Gentile neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a nickname as a kid. Jewish kids never get good nicknames. Italian guys, great nicknames. Very often nicknames that'll scare you. Sometimes just parts of the face. <laughs> the nose. Joey the chin. Carmine the sore palate. <laughs> That one I never really got. I don't know. <laughs> Jewish kids never get good nicknames. What are you going to call them? Saul? Thrifty? Schwartz? <laughs> What's the worst they can do? Give you the wrong change? <laughs> Mike the Mensch Mandelbaum? <laughs> Who's going to be afraid of that? Abe the Kibitzer Gluckstein? <laughs> Hi, the Kibitzer is coming. Okay. Trust me, the only thing you have to hide is the pastrami. <laughs> So, so in my neighborhood, if the kids wore any kind of religious symbols, they wore a very non-violent kind of symbols, either like a Jewish star or a high, something like that. Very non-violent kind of symbols. So when I grew up and I went outside the neighborhood, I was shocked to see kids wearing crucifixes. I'm like, holy jeez, that kid's wearing a guy nailed to a cross. I didn't know it was a religion, I thought it was a warning. <laughs> find you in the neighborhood. <laughs> because the truth is that Jesus was the victim of a violent crime. He was crucified. And people all over the world are wearing a reenactment of the way in which he was killed. In effect, they're wearing a crime scene. <laughs> so I say, I say it's a shame that Jesus had to be killed at all, but thank God he was killed in a way that people could wear. <laughs> wearing something like this. It's disrespectful. How do you even make the sign of a chariot? Does it have two wheels or three wheels? Fights would break out. What if he's walking down the street and he had one of those weird accidents? He's walking down the street and an air conditioner falls on his head. Jewelers would go crazy trying to make something like that. You got a guy standing like this with a 10,000 BTU fetters coming out? religious symbol. <laughs> so it just shows you what a kind and compassionate man that Jesus was. Because he knew that the Romans were going to kill him. And he knew that people would be wearing the way in which he was killed. <laughs> so he sat down with the Romans and he said, how are you going to do it? And they said, we're going to crucify you. You want a cross or a Jewish star? <laughs> and he thought about it for a minute and he said, I don't know, what do you think looks better under a white beater? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great.